Hello again, I'm Doug Smith. Welcome to the 22 April 2016 edition of Portsmouth This Week, the voice of Portsmouth Town Hall. Our guest this, this morning is uh, Joe White, who's the treasurer of the Portsmouth Rotary and another retired Navy guy. So welcome, Joe. Thank you very much, Doug. I appreciate the opportunity to come here and talk about Rotary and some of the things that we're doing. Um, That's great. Uh, can we maybe start out with the organization at large? I mean, the R Rotary International is huge. It was founded in 1905 uh, by Dr. Paul, Mr. Paul Harris. He uh, was a businessman in Chicago. He uh, wanted an organization to be a service organization and become an international organization. And the name Rotary, according to the lore anyway, is that they rotated the meetings, the weekly meetings about in their various offices. They were professionals. And it's since grown to about 1.2 million uh, yeah. members worldwide. And they take on large programs. and. I can talk about one of those, which you probably read about, is the, the uh, polio, uh, conquering yeah. polio. And I, I, that's right, I did say polio. Now, we remember that Dr. Salk in 1956. Yeah, cured it theoretically. Right? Theoretically cured it. There are some countries where the difficulty to get into the people who needed the vaccinations. Yeah. And uh, Rotary's been working on that since 1979. By 2012, they had. Um, all down, th all down except three countries, which I won't name because I'm not absolutely certain which ones they are, yeah. but I know there's three countries that, where it has not been eradicated. Yeah, one of the issues you're dealing with there is, particularly in some uh, countries, people think this is a Western plot to inoculate their kids or something. Mm -hmm. it's, it's bizarre, but uh, there are a lot of bizarre organizations out there, like ISIS, for example. Well, this is, this is, they've worked with, in fact, the Bill and uh, Melissa Gates Foundation got into it also. With that kind of money, we should, they should have it done, yeah. hopefully. Uh, yeah, that, you need somebody with deep pockets, that's for sure. He has them, yeah. So, how, how do you guys, the Portsmouth Rotary, fit into this? We're part of the orga international organization. We're part of a district, and they have okay. it all divided up. But we are the Portsmouth Rotary Club that does invest in gives money to charitable organizations in Portsmouth, the island, and Greater Rhode Island. Um, and as to quote Carol Ann Sylvia, the president of our, of our club, uh, we raise money and we give it away. And we do. Yeah. So that is, uh, and that's the var find various organizations that need it. Well, well that's a great mission, though, I think. Yeah. A lot of people, there's a lot of need out there. Uh, do you guys relate to the other towns? I mean. Yes. Um, we each carry on several, organ several fundraisers. Uh, we have a car show in April. The Middletown car show is in October. They're all in with ours, and we're all in with theirs. Okay. We, we plus up our num numbers in order to be able to do that, because it'd be very difficult to uh, run something that large without lots of help, yeah. professionals who know what, what's now going on. How many on. members do you have here in Portland? We actually have 14, which is like almost a micro club. But those 14, again, we can plus up with other clubs. We cooperate with Middletown uh, and Newport for the annual recognition of service members uh, in conjunction with the Navy League. And it's, uh, we, we get, yes, we do get together with other clubs, particularly on the island. Yeah. Now, what, what interested me was, uh, as a service organization, you guys meet weekly. Yes. And that, that's interesting, because that's, that's a lot. To, uh, I go to, I'm on a board of a couple things, we meet monthly, and I think that's a lot. The idea is that we get, it's not a requirement, you don't have to go to the meeting every, every week, but it's good to get together to talk about what's going on. And we get fresh ideas that way. Someone's heard something and I'll bring it up at the meeting because we don't like to do anything arbitrarily. No one goes off and freelances. We uh, get together yeah. at a meeting and vote on it, discuss <coughs> it and vote on it. So when do you meet and where do you meet now? We meet at the 15 Point Restaurant, which is one of, we went around looking for a place to meet from the place that we were at. And we figured they'll never lay us. Not only did they uh, want us there at, on Tuesday night at 6.30 at the 15 Point Restaurant in Portsmouth, they gave us a room all to ourselves upstairs. Upstairs, nice room. So it's a magnificent venue to have it, to have, we, we fit in there fine, we can invite guests, we can get speakers, and it's private, uh, couldn't ask for more. Yeah, I, I visited you guys a couple times when you were at the Valley Inn. Yes. Uh, probably around the 375th, because I was doing a lot of that stuff then. and. Uh, it's always nice because usually you get pretty good food from these places when they want you to be there. Well, we 15 Point is, is a prefix menu. I'm not doing an ad for them. But no, it, that's I, okay. I, I Sean will, Smith is a 
Good guy. He's wonderful. And yeah. we've, we've taken the show on the road a few times. We've gone to Portofino, wonderful deal. We've gone to um, Simone's in Warren, just outside really? Bristol. It's a wow. fairly new restaurant. And Jordan uh, tells us how he does everything. It's all garden to table. Yeah. So we do move around. That's um, great. I think it's good that you guys do meet weekly because things come up. You know, and, and sometimes the month is too long. You have to do a lot of business, you know, outside of the meetings. But this is good. You guys have a chance every week to talk about things. Uh, what kind of, uh, how, how did you get involved personally with this, just out of curiosity? You're a retired Navy guy. I was in uh, working for a company, in, uh, an investment company in, uh, in Newport. And they were having a state senator, Senator, uh, senator Adriano. Oh, yeah, uh, Chris Adriano, he's been on here several times, yeah. And when he was a state senator, he was coming to speak to the Rotary Club, and the president of the club at the time, his name was Peter Shank, said, would you like to go to this? And I said, well, yeah. I'd like to. So I went to the meeting, and then I got to meet I know some of the people, and there were some people in that Rotary, and you know, if they're a member of this club, I'd like to be a member of this club. Yeah. And then we had the first car show, who worked that venue, and I said, well, this is, this is something else. Like, I have a rule, don't question what you got going for you, but this is established. And my thought was, how do you get to have a car show on a place like Portsmouth Abbey? And the answer was they took me to the rock and they showed me the plaque that commemorated the very first one in 1956 also. That's how you At get Portsmouth to Abbey? Portsmouth Abbey. Wow. So you've got a long history here. It, it's, uh, it was founded yeah. in 1956 and it was located at Portsmouth Abbey. It's been done ever since except the two days where we had rain last year. Yeah, I know. Last year was a wash off on a lot of re reasons there. Uh, so how long have you been a member yourself? So I, I believe it's, it's 2011. Okay. Uh, we, and what do you do, work your way up through the different positions, the officer positions, or how does that work? You, you, it's not very difficult to get a position of, of, of responsibility <laughs> in the Rotary Club because yeah. there's a lot of, it's not the military as I found out. You can't order someone to do it or tell somebody to do it and expect it gets done because you yeah. have. We've all found that out. And uh, I became treasurer when our Carl uh, had our had an automobile accident, really serious, and he was in the hospital. And I figured, well, I'll take this over temporarily. Yeah. I've done it before as a flag mess treasurer. I know how to do this stuff. And Carl never came back, sadly. So we, yeah. I'm now the treasurer of Portsmouth Rotary Club. Now, what, what is Keith Humphreys doing these days? Uh, I, well, he comes to every meeting. He's the one that takes care. He's the one that gives us the history. You know, he's probably the background guy. Yeah. Cause, yes. Yeah. Good guy. Another good guy too. Uh, what kind of projects do you do? I know we'll talk about your, the, the big one, the, the Newport Motor Car Festival, 60th annual. Wow, that's, that's impressive. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But what is, so you do that one big event a year, and that's presumably a fundraiser? Yes, that is the, our key fundraiser. That is how we get the money to, to give away. Okay. Uh, beyond that, we, we've just completed, uh, this was a favorite of, of Carol Ann's, it was the fashion show and held again at Portofino where Joseph A. Bank provided some suits, some tuxedos and several oh, people. Really? We had a, a one, two of the fire people and one of the police and but me modeling tuxedos and then there were <laughs> ladies had some things from the black dress uh, place and, yeah. and it raised the money. And that was the key. Yeah. So we used the Portofino restaurant. And then you can use that money to turn around to local charities or local other the prime one that we didn't do this year because of the fact the car show was canceled last year for rain, so we didn't have a, we weren't, didn't have an abundance of funds. But we every year before that we've given a scholarship to two students, a boy and girl, from Portsmouth High School, and it's not a lot of money. Last year was two thousand apiece. This yeah. year, one before that was a thousand. But it, for people who commit com, uh, performed community service, and that's. Uh, we selected them from their resumes of about three That's or four great. people go through. Yeah, kids, I think, do need to be recognized for that because a lot of them go above and beyond, which is what you want. And, and they did. And yeah. we have to. And they're really all future Rotarians, probably. As well. well, that's uh, always the thought. You know, we always tell them about how they can yeah. join and how they can participate. Yeah. Well, talk a little bit about the car show, the uh, auto sh festival, motor car festival. The actual name is the Newport Motor Car Festival. And as I mentioned, that name is enshrined on a plaque, in low permanent plaque. Uh, right. If I can point to this, this is the, um, that's an actual rock at Portsmouth Abbey, and that's the plaque. It was founded by Dr. J. Rice Moody, who is a dent local dentist and a car enthusiast. His son, Stan Moody, attended one of our meetings and showed uh, movies, whole movies and photos that he had put, that he had um, imaged on discs. 
and he narrated them. It was almost like going back in time and watching yeah. how they put these, these older cars together and showed them. So this is uh, something that we've, well, we sponsor now, and we sponsor it as a fundraiser. And we invite all so sorts of cars. We carry, our members carry these little handbills with the image on it and the classes of cars. Yeah. So by Are they basic classic cars? No, they're, um, they're age year groups, they're uh, manufacturers, and they, there are certain, like Corvette, you could just have Corvettes. You have to divide them up in certain years yeah. because they change so much. Now, people bring their cars, they bring them up to show them off, is that essentially? Exactly. They start lining up on Corey's Lane, and usually they start about 7. We yeah. don't like them coming in before 7. We can't come in before 7. They'll come in. They're, they're admin fee, they get a little uh, flyer, they're classified, which one of these do they belong, and then they're directed and people actually park them right in their spaces. So by 11 o'clock we have an enormous number of cars that people have yeah. restored or kept beautiful, spent a lot of time, a lot sure. of money. A lot uh, of people like to show off those cars, they've spent a lot of work on them. And it's a competitive show, so we have oh, judges. We have judges too. First and second in each class, we have a best in show and a president's award. We used to just have best in show, but because Caroline and I can't agree on which one it should be, <laughs> so we create a president's award, and she picks that, and best in show, and I sort all of pick All right, that. well, that's good. So this is Father's Day, Sunday, June 19th, coming up. Yes. And we keep our fingers crossed uh, on, on the weather. If, we, it be, if it, the weather's nice, that's such a beautiful location, that grassy area right in front of Portsmouth Abbey down by the water. It, it is, and it's acres and acres. They had hydrangea bushes a few years ago. They've taken them out, replanted it. That grass is so well maintained and so yeah. uh, strong that you can actually park cars on it. And when it's all over, and we do a what we call a FOD walk down, far and out, like an aircraft carrier, make sure there's nothing left. We return it to them, just as we got it. Yeah. Now there is there an entry fee? Uh, just you, you really can't say the amount, but you could say there is. There's right? very reasonable entry fee for each car. Uh, okay. each car that enters the, the competition. Okay. For uh, visitors, and we park them an um, enormous amount of space up by the hockey rink. I'm using my hands, so the hockey rink's yeah. not here. The, ha the hockey rink, <laughs> and we have, we, we'll, we'll sh have people to yeah. direct them to the, that. Uh, there is a per car donation that we ask for, very, also very, very reasonable. So if you bring six kids and a driver, the, it's one, one fee. Yeah. One, one, not a fee, it's a donation or request. Okay. So, uh, think of the air show. Everybody goes to the air show. Yeah. If they haven't been to this car show, we have a parking lot. People tell you where to go. There for people who need help. We have leisure limousine to take them down. Keith Humphreys ar arranged for leisure limousine yeah. to come and, and carry people down Corey's Lane, or they can walk down the, the campus. That's great. So uh, from ten to three. On uh, June 19th. Yeah, it's pretty much over by 3. In fact, it's, it, by the time the trophies are awarded and everything, it's almost a little after 2. Sometimes it gets going a little faster and people yeah. have seen everything. I see Foods Catered by Clements. That is, that, that is another example of let's go get a caterer to take care of the food. And we said, let's yeah. go to Clements and, Cle oh, they'll never do it. They'll, they'll, they'll laugh at us. Yeah. They just said yes and they're going to, the food, it's going to be a good food, good feeder. So. Yeah, yeah, Clements Marketplace. Food's always good from Clements, and they're really yeah. dynamite in terms of supporting the community as well. Always. Yeah. And, uh, we have a lot of great organizations like the Rotary. We're almost out of time here. Oh my goodness, okay. Time goes fl fast when we're doing this, but uh, thanks very much for coming aboard today and uh, talking about this, and uh, I'll have to go down and see you at the uh, car show. Thank you very much, Doug. I appreciate the opportunity to... Okay, and say hi to your president for us. I will do. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, again, I'm back uh, with the second half of our show today. We've got uh, our town planner, Gary Crosby, back on the show. Uh, Gary, welcome. You're always welcome here. You know Thank that. Thank you very much. Uh, what, uh, I, what we probably need to talk about is the process for developing the comprehensive plan, because I think that's something that your office, the planning board, and, and people have been looking at for some time. Yes. Uh, uh, if you could just explain the process, that'd be great. Sure. Back in, um, um, a, a, as many people are perhaps unaware of, the planning board has the sole responsibility for preparing the comprehensive plan for the municipality. A couple of years ago now, I went to the planning board 
um, and we began to discuss how we're going to go about m making this happen. We decided, number one, we decided to do it in-house. Many communities will hire a consultant, very expensive. We I decided know. to do it in-house. Um, we, um, and, and that I would, the planning board, um, we agreed that, that I would r write a draft of the plan and the planning board would then process it and so forth, that, that we, we felt like it needed to be really written in one voice. One of the problems with our old plan was that it, it, it was written by committees and it, and it, and it shows. And so we, we really felt like to maintain internal consistency in the plan and so forth that, that I would produce a draft and that um, the planning board would take it from there. So uh, this was a couple of years ago now. We, I have been busy over that time uh, since then um, uh, doing things like deconstructing the plan that we have now and um, consulting with my colleagues in other communities about how they're, what they're doing, how they, what works, what doesn't work, um, and familiarizing myself with the guidelines that are provided by the state for what's supposed <coughs> to be in the plan and working on a series of vision statements, of, you know, to, as, a, as a core beginning for what we're going to do. So um, I was doing that for quite some time. Um, the town administrator and uh, the chairman of the planning board both said, um, you ne we need to kind of kick it up a notch here. We need to um, get it uh, done. We need to get it going. Yeah. And so I sat, we sat down and developed a, um, a, a framework for how we're going to do it, a series of planning board workshops where uh, and I, I would publish an element of the comprehensive plan one per month a month, fully a month in advance of the workshop where it was going to be discussed. And so we've done that now. The first workshop will be held on, the, uh, on April 28th, next, th next Thursday, yeah. um, uh, in, in, the plan, uh, in front of the planning board. And, and that, the idea is that anybody who has read, uh, cared to read the, um, the element that was published a month ago, the services and facilities element is the first one that we've, we've uh, tackled um, and wants to give some input to the planning board on, um, or to me, uh, on, on what they think about it. Uh, that'll take place. Okay, so this will be posted online, presumably, so that people can see it? Uh, it is posted online. We have... Um, uh, we have yes, yes. It, it, okay. We put it out there for for people to uh, download, or they can come to me if they want to see it. Yeah. And, you know, we've had a lot of interest in by um, a number of people who have signed up for a, a distribution list where we mail it to email it to them directly. So okay. uh, it's out there for anybody uh, to see. Let me go back a minute here because this is a state requirement, and yes. the state has certain category certain categories for these different sections that they want. Yes. Right? So essentially, and then uh, basically whatever you come up with has got to be approved by the state first, and then it goes before the council. Um, well, yes and no. It has to, the, 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 there is a process where the state will um, approve chapters, drafts of chapters as we go along, and g give me guidance on you didn't, you didn't hit this point or you need to do okay. this or that or the other thing. That's, that's running continuously with the planning board's um, workshop efforts. And so, uh, and then ultimately what has to happen is the, once all of the elements are done and they have been workshopped by the planning board, the last workshop is in November, I think, um, the planning board then has to hold a, a public hearing, probably gonna take two or three meetings, but a, an official public hearing on the, um, on the plan, on the plan as a whole, then at that point um, they that can go up to the state for their tentative approval. They can't approve it unless the the town council approves it. But it goes up to the state for fine tuning and approval there. Then it comes back to the town council, and it, uh, the town council has to ha hold public hearing on on the final plan. Yeah. And that's probably going to be. I would say probably January of next year, um, and um, 
then it goes from there it goes up to the state for final approval okay so there are many opportunities oh yeah in this process for people to express their views or you take a look and disagree agree that's right each one of the elements there are uh, 12 of them services and facilities economic development housing recreation agriculture energy um, uh, natural resources each one of those elements will have um, a a a month long period. Well, each one of those will have a workshop um, in front of the planning board. Every single one of those is open for comment at any moment and up until, um, and including the planning board um, uh, public yeah. hearing in, in November. So uh, um, uh, that's our. Uh, we're trying to make this as open and transparent. It seems and, a very reasonable process to me. I. I was a member of one of the subcommittees back 10 years ago, or whenever it was, we did the last one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. It was like, how can you write by a committee? You well, know, you write something, next guy just erases it. Yeah, we, we agreed early on that um, my job basically was to get something on paper for everybody to, yeah. to you know, I, I have no pride of, of authorship. Yeah, throw in this something and, out there as a baseline. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's 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 my job. Well, because I, I remember going to these meetings, it seemed like forever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then it took a really long time uh, before we f the committee finally folded after mm -hmm. a year or so of this stuff. Um, <clears throat> I think th this way seems to make much more sense. And as I say, and as you mentioned, there are opportunities for people to comment on the sections mm -hmm. as they're brought up, mm -hmm. and on the and there's several for commenting on the whole plan. Yes, ex exactly. The, the, both the planning board and the uh, town council will hold big public workshops on the whole thing. Yeah. So. So, so the idea that nobody has an opportunity to vet this stuff is really far-fetched. Well, I think that there's, a, there's this notion out there that somehow or another I'm writing this plan and that this is, you know, without, uh, yeah. without <laughs> any input and that this is the, the end. The, plan, the plan's written and, yeah. and, it, and nobody had any input. This is the beginning of the process. Yeah. Uh, so y you're, you're starting already. You've already had the facilities section out. Yes. And uh, have you received public comments? I, I haven't um, yet. I think most people have been talking more about the process than they have about the content. I have, yeah. well, I, as a matter of fact, I have received um, uh, two notes from people who uh, found an error, you know, and, yeah, and wanted fair. to bring yeah. a, a correction to, to my, yeah. my mind. So, um, so to answer your question, no, I haven't received any real direct um, uh, apart from, hey, this is great, you know, good job. Um, yeah. uh, no real uh, input on the content. Okay, so <clears throat> can you give us the schedule maybe in the next month or two? Uh, w what sections are coming up? Well, that's up? right. The, the, as I, the, the meetings, the planning board meetings will take place on the last Wednesday of each month. Um, we had a scheduling conflict um, for this very next first week. one. Yeah. Um, the services and facilities will be um, um, discussed at this next one by the beginning of next week I will be publishing the uh, economic development element which will be discussed in May at the last Wednesday in May and then after that is the housing uh, element which will be dis uh, have a workshop in the last Wednesday in June okay. and et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this, there is a, I put up, there's a, there's a memo that I wrote, including, that includes a calendar yeah. that um, is up on the town website. If you go on the town website over on to the left is a, is a, is a, is a link to a whole page of information on the comprehensive plan. And this, this, this document is up there. So yeah, there's plenty of stuff there because I was looking up, uh, looking at it yesterday and I was, this, that that process, that memo that mm -hmm. you wrote, I think, explains everything very clearly. Good. I thought. Thank you. And folks can see the uh, town website up on our screen right now. Uh, you got an assistant now in your office. Does that help? <laughs> I do. Yes, it helps tremendously. Mike Ashola is his name, and he um, 
he's a GIS expert, and so he's been doing all uh, doing all the mapping. Many communities don't have um, uh, uh, people who can do the mapping. Uh, statewide planning, of course, will offer to do it for you. I'm 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 blessed to have somebody we can do we can do it in house and sort of interactively. Plus, he's um, He's a whiz at um, producing charts and graphs and things like that. So if I need, yeah. you know, a component to, to, to stick into there, he's yeah, there are quite a few graphs or charts required in this yes, thing. Is I, I, there is, is and, I and one of the one of the major components of of any comprehensive plan is the maps. You know, our old one had twenty eight maps or something. Yeah, like that. exactly. So yeah, I saw that. Each of these elements will have uh, maps to go along with. So he's he's very he's invaluable. Now. So essentially, you're looking at a section at a time. The title of the section or the content of the section was basically dictated by the state requirements. Well, they have some requi they have a require basic requirements that we have to address this. We have to, right. you know, yeah, yeah. There are there are guidelines. It doesn't make any sense for me to produce a plan that um, that isn't going to be approvable by the state. So okay. we're sticking pretty close to the guidelines. Uh, another thing I came across on the same website was the vision statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the vision statement is where, we talked about this before, is where everything starts. Yes. This is kind of, this is where we want to be. Well, I have been working for months on, on each, what, what, we've, what we've done is rather than have a vision, st uh, an overall vision statement for the town. It it, it would be just too broad. We've I've developed uh, a simple vision statement for each element. Now, if you take those all together, there you have it. There yeah. is um, there is a vision statement for town. So the, in this particular, this new element, this first element, um, it, the vision statement. Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly short statement of yeah. where we want to be. Portsmouth will be a community where cost-effective, high-quality municipal services and well-maintained public facilities meet the challenging, changing needs of current and future residents. Yeah. Simple, basic statement, where we want to be 20 years from now, what we're going to be like 20 years from now. Yeah. And then goals and policies uh, and implementation items flow from that. Okay, we're almost out of time as I knew we'd be, but what is your deadline for getting this whole thing completed and into the state for final? Approval? Well, as I, t as I said, the last workshop will be in November. Um, it'll take us, it'll take me a month or so to get it um, all buttoned up um, and put together for the planning board for them to have their public hearings. Then it goes to the state. They can take up, a t up to 120 days to do their okay. review and then after that, we go to the planning board. So I'm I'm thinking, or out to the town council. So I'm thinking, um, or early spring of next year. Okay, great, Gary. Thanks so much for coming aboard. People can contact him on on Gary's email, or you can go on the website and get his email as well. Uh, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, I just have a couple uh, public service announcements to make. One is the primary voting is next Tuesday. Uh, check with the uh, uh, the the uh, folks down in the, in the voters' office down there uh, to find out where you go. It's there are only three sites, I believe, in Portsmouth for that primary. But get out and vote, or you won't have any excuse for the somebody gets in that you didn't want. Uh, second one is just to remind everybody that every Tuesday uh, the police department is open for tours, and we encourage people to go down there and see what the existing police department looks like and see why we need a new police uh, department. Uh, that's about it for me, Doug Smith. We'll see you next time on Portsmouth This Week.